Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson. In our previous lesson, we discussed about inland transactions. Particularly, we have identified conditions for inland transactions, determine persons capable of carrying out trade, and recall the rights of traders. Let me remind you some of the main points of our previous lesson. Business transactions need some important documents for facilitating exchange of goods and services. They are the inquiry, the quotation, the order, the invoice, and the document of payment for the goods. Let's begin today's lesson with the meaning of foreign trade. Foreign trade is a trade which one country carries on with another country which is beyond the national boundaries. Foreign trade involves the exchange of goods and services between nations. Goods and services sold to other countries are called exports. Goods and services purchased from other countries are called imports. To explain why countries trade, we must look at the theory of absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Absolute advantage is the ability to produce a good at a lower cost in terms of real resources than another country. Absolute advantage occurs when a country has special natural resources or capabilities that allow it to produce a given commodity at a lower cost than any other nation in the world. For example, China can produce 10 cars per hour with three employees and other resources. Ethiopia can produce five cars per hour with three employees and other resources. Assume that the employees of both parties are paid equally and the quality of the product is the same. China has an absolute advantage over Ethiopia in producing cars. This is because China can produce twice as many cars as Ethiopia can with the same number of employees and resources. Even when absolute advantage does not exist, it can still be valuable for nations to conduct trade. This is because of comparative advantage. Comparative advantage refers to the value that a nation gains by selling the goods it produces more efficiently than other goods. Goods and services are produced more efficiently when each country specializes in the products for which it has a comparative advantage. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the students sitting next to you. You have two minutes. Get ready. What do developing nations have to produce in order to have a comparative advantage?
Students, did you point out what developing nations have to produce in order to have a comparative advantage? Good. Let's now provide you the answer. Then you can compare your answers. Most developing countries have large, unskilled labor forces with low labor costs. Labor-intensive industries flourish in such an environment. Thus, developing nations can produce clothing, toys, and shoes, which are all labor-intensive products, at a lower cost than most industrialized nations. Where those products are concerned, emerging or developing nations have a comparative advantage. Every country has a comparative advantage in some products. However, countries want to produce each and every product for self-sufficiency strategies and needs. As a result, they restrict importation of many items to their markets and at the same time, they encourage export of their products to other countries to generate hard currency. For example, Ethiopia levies no export customs duty on coffee. But there is import customs duty on most products to be imported to Ethiopia except capital goods such as plant, machineries, and equipments. Sometimes, countries impose trade restrictions either on the import of specific products or on trade with particular countries. A trade restriction is an artificial restriction on the trade of goods and services between two countries. It is the result of protectionism. Some of the commonly used trade restriction types are as follows. Customs duties, additional taxes, and non-tariff barriers. This includes economic embargo, quantity limit, and restriction of hard currency available for import. Now let us discuss one of the most commonly used types of trade restrictions. Customs duty is a tax levied on imports and sometimes on exports by the customs authorities of a country to raise state revenue and to protect domestic industries. Customs duty is based generally on the value of goods or upon the weight, dimensions, or some other criteria of the item, such as the size of the engine in case of automobiles. The two types of tariffs are revenue tariffs and protective tariffs. Both have the effect of raising the price of the product in the importing nations, but for different reasons. Revenue tariffs are imposed solely to generate income for the government. Protective tariffs, on the other hand, are imposed to protect a domestic industry from competition by keeping the price of competing imports high or higher than the price of similar domestic products. A revenue tariff is simply to make money while a protective tariff is to protect a nation's citizen's market. Customs duties are levied in different ways. An ad valorem duty is a duty levied on the percentage of the value of the imported product. It is the type of duty most often applied. An example would be a 2% ad valorem on imports of leather shoes. Specific duty rate is based on physical unit or weight or other quantity. Such duty applies equally to low and high priced goods. 
to the extent that the same duty rate is applied to similar goods with different import prices, specific duties tend to be more restrictive of low-priced goods. Let us discuss the second type of trade restriction. The restriction can be effective using additional taxes and non-tariff barriers. When the government faces financial problems and certain extraordinary problems like war, it levies customs subcharge to increase its revenue to finance the problem. Non-tariff barriers to trade are trade barriers that restrict imports but are not in the usual form of a tariff. Some of non-tariff barriers are quotas, embargo, a foreign exchange control, and excessive procedure. An import quota. In the context of international trade, this is a limit put on the amount of a specific good that can be imported. An embargo is similar to an import quota except that it restricts all imports for a specific product or for a specific industry or from a specific country. In effect, it is an import quota of zero. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the student sitting next to you. You have two minutes. Get ready. List and briefly describe the principal restrictions that may be applied to a nation's imports. Students, have you listed and described the principal restrictions that may be applied to a nation's imports? Good. Let's now provide you the answer so that you can compare it with your responses. The restrictions that may be applied to a nation's imports are as follows. Tariff or import duty. This is a tax that is levied on a foreign product entering a country. Quota. This is a limit on the amount of a particular good that may be imported into a country. Embargo. This is a complete hold 
to trading with a particular nation or in a particular product. Foreign exchange control. This is a restriction on the amount of a particular foreign currency that can be purchased or sold. Currency devaluation. This is reduction of the value of a nation's currency relative to the currencies of other countries. Bureaucratic red tape. Students, now let us also discuss about the arguments of trade restriction. Do you know that much of the import trade in Ethiopia was subject to trade restrictions? What is the reason for these trade restrictions? There are arguments for and against trade restrictions. Balance of payment should be equalized. This may be considered necessary to restore confidence in the country's monetary system and in its ability to repay its debts. To protect new or weak industries. Sometimes governments believe that specific industries, which are less efficient than foreign competition, would become more efficient if given time to develop without being undermined by cheaper foreign prices. Governments often determine that restricting the export or import of specific products is in the national best interest. A nation that produces weapon systems may want to prohibit those systems from being sold to potential enemies of the state. The other arguments for trade restrictions are as follows. Products may be embargoed because they are dangerous or unhealthy. For example, farm products contaminated with insecticides. To retaliate for another nation's trade restrictions. To protect domestic jobs. Even if we have discussed the argument for trade restriction, there are also arguments against trade restrictions, including the following. Higher prices for consumers, restriction of consumers' choices, misallocation of international resources. Now, I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the students sitting next to you. You have two minutes. Get ready. What reasons generally are given for imposing trade restrictions?
Students, have you discussed reasons given for imposing trade restrictions? Good. Let's now provide you the answer. Some of the reasons for trade restrictions are to equalize a nation's balance of payments, to protect new or weak industries, to protect national security, to protect the health of citizens, to retaliate for another nation's trade restrictions, and to protect domestic jobs. Let me wind up today's discussion by summarizing the main points. Today, we have learned about absolute and comparative advantages of foreign trade. Absolute advantage and comparative advantage are theories that are widely used in foreign trade. Trade restrictions generally refer to the various barriers to free trade, imports and exports imposed by governments. In our next lesson, we will discuss about documents and special terminologies in foreign trade. This brings us to the end of our lesson today. See you next time in another program. Until then, goodbye teacher, goodbye students.